The <laughs> Welcome to the Show podcast is independently produced by me, Manny Gomez, and CT. Help people find our show by taking two minutes to leave a five-star rating and review wherever you listen to podcasts. Thank you. Visit audibletrial.com forward slash welcome to the show for a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial. Let's start the show. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's up, everybody? It's the Welcome to the Show podcast. CT, what's good? What is going on, Manny? Welcome back. Thanks, man. Had a good time in the motherland. Uh, I'm still in the, on the process of detoxing. Um, okay. A lot of alcohol was was drank. A lot of rice was eaten. Uh, okay, okay. Had some goat, some amazing goat from the one and only Bienvenida. Shout out to Bienba. Wow. Hola. It's been a while. Um, yeah, man. Nice, nice roast pig. I had, you know, the works. It was just, it was just, my stomach was asking me to stop at one point. It was just like, please, please stop. So what, what kind of activities did you get into over there besides drinking or what did everything involve drinking? Mm, well, in DR, everything involves drinking, as you know. But uh, we went to La Ensenada one day, which is, you know, the beach out in Puerto Plata, which you can walk okay. out pretty far and it doesn't go beyond like i would say your hip area it's a very shallow beautiful white sand beach um we did a pasadilla which for you non-dominican people it's like a i guess it's like a picnic is that what you would call it call it so i would of? say it's more like a day yeah day picnic yeah a whole, you a whole day's worth of picnics yeah you go by the river you have music playing you're drinking you're you know uh a guy out there, Jose Miguel, if you're listening, you probably don't understand a word I'm saying, but shout out to Jose Miguel who made an amazing, this is the best meal I think I had my entire time there. He made a, a asopao de jaiba, which mm. if, again, for my non-Spanish speaking people, it's basically think of gumbo. That's what an aso, what, what asopao is. It's like gumbo, like Louisiana gumbo. Um, this guy made it with fresh crab meat straight from the river, and that shit was the bomb. It was so fucking good. Um, they got the cra- they got the crabs that day from the river. No, so he goes to I think he gets it from Mao, I believe he says. Oh, okay. I got and you. then our uncle Abelino, he he also puts some puts some up that I believe that they got from Cabanico, which is a small town uh, village from where we're from. Um, mm-hmm. So there was a mixture of local crabs and crabs from another you know another town in the Dominican Republic. But yeah, there was a there was a time where. Those crabs used to, I guess there's, there was an abundance of crabs. Oh, like yeah. People used to go in there and mm-hmm. grab them by the hand, like hand with yeah, their well, hands. I, in. When, I, when I was a kid, I used to pl- I used to play a lot with this this kid, Ramoncito, who I'm sure you know who I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, he, so he was born there. So he was there for a long time. So when I would go to DR, I'd go and hang out with him all day. And we would go into the river with our goggles and get crabs. And then we'd boil them yeah. up. Like, it was fun, you know. Um, but, yeah, it was, a, it was a good trip. It was I wish we had more extended family members there, but overall, I'm I'm excited that we have a house in the campo, um, and it was a good time. Yeah, glad to hear, man. Time. Yeah, glad, and I glad you had to get. Went to see El Chaval, by the way, and uh, okay. my my uh, it has reinforced my position that El Chaval is the best bachatero in the world, not named Romeo Santos right now not not all time right now <clears throat> yeah I'm, I'm not gonna get into a debate about music or anything <laughs> man like I, you can have your opinion that's what okay. music is about it's for everybody enjoy it all right have right now good, have a good have a good time and but, live uh, by the way live if you listen to i'm a, I'm a big anthony santo fan and we're ostracizing about 75 percent of our audience right now but you know what fuck it um and um if you if you listen to a Anthony Santos um, concert on CD or you go watch him live, wow! I can't see your face. I know, right? Well, how weird was that? <laughs> it's pretty crazy. Um, he half of the time he's not singing. He talks a lot of shit. His his guitar is out of tune. El Chaval sounds like you're listening to him on CD. Like the guy is an expert live performer, and I was happy to go see him, man. Yeah, uh, I think I only saw him once in not in a club setting but like a stage like concert setting in dr once and 
to be honest with you, I don't remember. It, it, feel, it felt like everybody's performances that day were kind of weak, crappy. Yeah. You know what day I'm talking about, right? I think, yeah, uh, the bachatazo. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I don't think I don't think Chavai sucks, but I don't think he's, you know, on okay. anyone's level of, of who've been, who has been called the best at any time, you know? I'm just saying right now. Right now. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, I know, but that's still that's still a very, you know, strong claim. That's like saying like, ah, there was a time where Javai was the best bachatero. Well, think about that. I think we're going to look back on in history and say, "All right, the the 2010s, 2020s belonged to Romeo Romeo first and then El Chaval." I would be I would hope that I'm around and old enough to debate that because I I Kind of disagree, but again, man, I'm not here to debate you. Okay. On your taste in music versus right, my so, taste in music. So, like, 50 years from now, in episode, you know, 145,000, we're gonna come back to this topic, and you will see that I'm right, as I always all am. Right. Um. All right. So we have a lot to talk about today. We're gonna we're gonna kind of reformat a little bit. We're gonna start with sports, and of course, it's baseball season, so we're gonna talk about our favorite sport, baseball. There's a couple things we want to talk about in that respect. We have a lot of Red Sox talk, and I want to ask CT about who his Rookie of the Year uh, winner is at this point. I think this rookie class is, the is for me, that I can remember one of the best rookie classes um, in my lifetime, at least. Then we're going to talk about some TV and film. Uh, I watched Enter the Dragon on my flight back from DR, and I have some opinions about that movie. And then we're going to jump into current events. There's a conspiracy theory floating around about Jeffrey Epstein, and these mass shooting, the mass shooting situations. So mm-hmm. if you want to jump to any of those parts in the episode, just look in the episode description and go ahead and skip ahead or, or listen to the whole show. All right, CT, let's start with sports. The Boston Red Sox. Uh, so... Your Boston Red Sox, CT, are—I don't know if you can call it a free fall. It's not good. I listened to your episode with Ivy last week. Great job, by the way. Thanks. I could hear it in your voices. You're—you're you're kind of disappointed in your team, even though you won the championship last year. And while I was in DR after a night of heavy drinking, I decided to get into a bout with you on WhatsApp, and I <laughs> asked if. If Dombrowski, should Dombrowski lose his job at the end of this season? And what was your take on that, CT? It was no. Why not? Uh, Because we are not even a, we haven't even gotten to a year removed from dominating baseball and winning the World Series. Not even a year. Not even a year has gone by. Mm-hmm. The season, that MLB season hasn't even finished yet. We're still months away from a World Series. Uh, and the last team to win it was the team that he put together. Mm-hmm. And I don't believe that that warrants firing anyone. Okay. So right. I, I I agree. I actually agree with you that that winning that World Series buys them more time. But I think that I think that the leash is shorter than what you think it is. Although I don't know what you think his leash is. I would give him, which I said to you in the WhatsApp chat last week, I would give him half the season. You know, maybe up to the trade deadline or something next year. Um, They have a good enough offense, but he did nothing to address the weakness in the team in the bullpen, and he ended up giving out big contracts to Chris Sale, and you still have Mookie Betts weighing in the balance. I think that, that he kind of... He kind of landlocked this team right now where, yes, you won a championship, but you have no flexibility, no maneuverability. And that his job is to create depth, to give the team a chance to compete every single year. And I don't think he did a good job at that. I think he did a great job at spending hand over fist to, to bring in the best players. And they performed amazingly for that season. But we're looking at virtually the same roster except for two pitchers and Joe Kelly and... Craig Kimbrell, and Kimbrel. this team is, is performing substantially worse than they did last year. And, not, and we're not even taking into consideration that Rafi Devers is playing at a phenomenal level. 
Xander Bogarts is having a career year. He's he's the best shortstop in baseball. Not no like no questions asked. Mitch Moreland is having a phenomenal year. Mookie isn't Mookie from last year, but he's still doing good. You have David Price is, ha- is having a good season. Um, Erod, despite you know the run support and everything, he's winning a lot of games. And Chris Sale's not Chris Sale, but I don't think he's as bad as a lot of people are making it out to be. So I, I just can't like. I can't make sense of what's going on with this team because I know they're not this bad. You know what I mean? Yeah, and honestly, like it's I, it's it's odd how how they're losing these games. Like uh, we, our last two games were lost by a one run difference. You mm-hmm. know, we those are games that we were winning last year. But I really think that if we go into next season with even this exact same roster that we have right now, we're not going to be this bad. I think honestly, man, like. Maybe it's a mixture of the way the season started where nobody, none of the pitchers got enough spring training done or whatever. Maybe it's the Yankees hot start that put the pressure on us to have to succeed early on earlier than we we had to in the in the previous year. I don't know. But when I look at that lineup and I'm looking at a lot of our pre, uh, previous games. Yeah, we're, we're losing games. But look, six, five, five, four, 12, four. I'll give it that we got our ass whooped that day. We win 16-4. We win 3 nothing. We tie 4-4. We lost 6-2 to Cincinnati. But then we won 7-5 the day before. The series with the Yankees minus one game wasn't as bad as you, you would think with the way the pitching has been. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't I don't see this team. I mean, let's call it what it is. They're, it's, 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 they're, they're, we know what the flaws are. And... But at the same time, like the lineup is the best lineup in baseball. Like I, it's 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 a rare combination in a team. Yeah. You know, so I think it's just it's it's just one of those situations where I, I would be comfortable with st- starting with this team again next season. You know, with I would the be same comfortable pitching with that. and everything. Same everything. I would be comfortable with that. Really? Again, there's a there's a lot of games that we're losing by one run that we would have won last year. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes sometimes that's the difference between, you know, uh, a good team and a team that wins 95 games plus. I don't know. Right. right. But um, I wouldn't be upset. Not only wouldn't I be upset starting with this team next year if we started trading away guys before they're they're due for a contract signing. That could turn a farm system right around. You know, like I'm not saying let Mookie go and then don't try signing him again. But if we let him go and get some prospects back, you know, the way that the Yankees did with Chapman. Yeah. What kind of haul can we get from Mookie Betts? If they're really thinking about hitting the reset button, I'd be okay with that. But I, we, I would also like us to make an effort at signing Mookie, you know, yeah, whether, yeah. whether, whether we keep Mookie on the team or not, if, if uh, he's not going to sign an extension. So whether we keep him or not, he's going to hit free agency. It's the same thing. Right. You know? I know you know so, what I never I never considered the Chapman Yankees angle for Mookie Betts letting him go trading him for somebody for, you're gonna get I think you can get a giant haul for a guy like Mookie Betts it's like trading Mike Trout and then try to get him back next year again yeah I mean that that would be that would be genius if if Dombrowski can pull something off like that it would be genius especially considering that after the season when the season is up he's in his last year of arbitration I think he got like 20 mil this year. So he's going to be lo- he's looking at getting something around 25 to 30 million dollars which is going to it's going to hamper you guys anyway. At that point you might as well just give him the the 30 mil a year extension contract. Um mm-hmm. and then you, JD I highly doubt that he's going to opt out of his deal. Um, I think he is. You think he will? Yeah. Even considering what free agency he's been over the last few years. So what is JD making now? Like what's what's left if he doesn't if he opts in? What's what's the contract looking at? Let me look it up. Let's go to Spot Rack. Spot Rack, man. The best. The best this is. Oh, I typed in JD Martinez con oh. Hmm. Oh, there we go. Here we go. Uh let's see. So he's owed twenty three, nineteen I would say twenty twenty sixty mil for the next three years. The guys I don't 20. think it's I don't think it's crazy for him to sign a five year deal. With not as much annually, but more overall. I mean, he's still one of the best hitters in baseball. He is, you know? but he's de- he's dealing with an ailing back issue that keeps representing repre- itself over and over again. Um, I don't have the stats in front of me right now because my computer's slow as hell. But 
excuse me. Um, he isn't as good as last year, even though he's still really good. Like you can't really, I can't yeah, complain about JD this year. You're comparing um, last year to a season that not many people in the history of the sport have. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so, what I mean. I mean, he could take the chance and see if he can opt out and get another forty mil in the open market. But mm-hmm. I don't know. Looking at free agency, he's going to be thirty-two next season. The back issues. Um, I don't know if I would take that chance if I were him. Well, I don't think he'll just take the chance blindly and be like, "All right, here's free agency. Like, let me go out there and see what I can get." I think, uh, even though teams aren't allowed to discuss contracts and and all this stuff, I'm pretty sure that goes on with agents. Yeah. On on the low low, so he won't he, he won't opt out and just blindly go into the uh into free agency. He he'll opt out because he knows there's money out there for him to get. No, I I don't think it'd be the smartest thing for him to just opt out on on the just on the assumption that he deserves more money like that's his assumption right. but i think if his agent says by the way like there's a couple teams that will tack on two more years and they will tack on another 20 mil or so um that might happen i don't know i wouldn't i wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't if he does or doesn't opt out you know i wonder who would take that chance what's a team that has money and could use in a dh or an outfielder the Rays, the Rays. How long is the Mo- How long is Nelson Cruz under contract for? Maybe the Twins. I don't know, but Nelson Cruz, man, that guy's a a monster. Like, oh my god! Does- and, and I know that this is off topic, kind of, but I think that, and I think we said this last time in the last episode we did together. I think that it's time for baseball to just come a- come out ahead of this, or not ahead. At this point, you're behind, but come out in front of this. Admit that the balls are different. Just wholeheartedly say, all right, we've done the studies. The balls are different. And these are the balls that we're going to continue using for the future. Because if you decide in the middle of next year or whatever, in the offseason, that you're going to change the balls again, you're going to get a completely different game next year. And it's just going to, for me, it's going to ruin it a little bit. So just keep these balls at this point. You know what I'm saying? Like, we're seeing this level of production. It's entertaining. Um don't go back to it. And the reason why I said that is because of Nelson Cruz. I think he's had like two, three home run games already this year. It's insane. Yeah, he's 40. He's going to, I mean, he's 38 and he's due another 12 mil next year from the he has Twins. A club option, yeah, which they're going to pick up. I mean, yeah, that's, that's nothing. That's good business right there. Yeah. Yeah, so I don't know, man. Um, the Red Sox, I would, I, so yes, I think that. I don't know how you let a player like Mookie Betts walk away. Um, that's a big risk that you're taking. He may not come back. You can't rely on him coming back. Um, and he's, like I said, next to Mike Trout, he's the best player in baseball. And um, But by the same token, with your team being landlocked the way that it is, you'd be removing payroll from your salary, which will th- then give you uh, flexibility to go out and get other pieces. And it would it would boost up your farm system because I think that you can get a lot for him. Um, yeah, that's the thing that like, and and again, maybe maybe it's because we won the World Series, but we got to be realistic. Like, we can't spend any money. We don't have no. We don't have anything in the. Nobody wanted to trade with us because we had nothing. Nothing. To offer. <laughs> like nobody wanted to trade with us because we we couldn't even we had, we got Cashner. That's it. You, uh, you have you have you have the worst farm system, and you have you're above the the luxury tax. Yeah, and like we couldn't even get an injured David Robertson, probably. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like we couldn't, we couldn't do anything. Oh my and God. for a anonymous team to come out and say, or whoever it was that said that quote, where the Red Sox would have had to do something stupid to get anything, which yeah. I assume like put Devers and Bogarts right. in a package or something, you know? Uh, for for people to talk about like that about our team, let's be realistic. Like either we're giving guys up next season to to build a farm system back up or just be content with what you're looking at now. And I am content with that, by the way, I said that already in the beginning, like if we start another season, if we restart this season with the same team, it can be a different outcome. Like all those games that we're losing by one run could be the difference, you know, I don't know. Yeah. But let's go Red Sox. Crazy, man. Crazy times and Red Sox nation. I didn't think that the turnaround would be this quick. Like I said, I don't think that, th- I don't think that they're this bad. Um, I read somewhere that they have the worst conversion rate. I think that's what the stat is called, meaning that they 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 don't hold on to leads 
to the end of games. They've blown the most leads of any team in baseball. Yeah. Um, but I can't imagine that a bullpen can can hurt you that much. You know what I mean? Like I know that th- there's a lot of games where the Red Sox are just annihilating their oppo- their opponents. They're scoring a shitload of runs. Um, but I don't know. I think you need I think you need a bullpen arm. I don't. But I don't know who it's going to be. And I don't know. Maybe maybe because may, all right. I don't want to blow smoke off a of, of, of fucking Aaron Boone's ass or anything. But he's he's managed his bullpen pretty well like you see anybody that comes out there you you feel like you have a decent chance of getting out of the inning the inning even when Jonathan Holder was struggling even when David Hill was struggling even when Chad Green was struggling he was finding ways to get the job done and I don't know if if it's that the Red Sox just don't have the talent or if it's that the the bullpen is not being managed correctly I'm not sure what's going no, on I, th- I think it's I think it's the talent, and this is why I think it's the talent. Like we, our strength is our lineup, like it was last year, right? Uh, our starting pitching pitched well enough last year that our bullpen didn't need to be on every night. This year, because our starting pitching is just maybe recently catching up with the team, and still not even because David Price hits the hits the IL, and even though Chris Sale had an amazing start last time out. You know, against the Yankees, he didn't do so hot. Um, so now it's like it's like it's the same argument I have in terms of using a lot of bullpen arms. You're expecting five guys to pitch lights out like on the same day, and that's never like that's never the case, you know. Right. So now, whenever whenever our offense, not that they take nights off, but whenever we have a night a night where we don't put up five runs, uh. We, I just don't think we have the talent to overcome that. So it's it's kind of like we don't need an elite bullpen. We need a decent bullpen. We don't even mm-hmm. have that. So now it's that's where you get these losing streaks that, you know, I, what, what really killed us was getting swept by the Rays and getting swept by the Yankees. Yeah, you know, that, was... that really, really, really killed us. Yeah. yeah. But a decent bullpen might have might have meant it might have done something different. Like we might have won one of those games. We might have just one one game in that in that whole span i don't know uh it, it seems like the morale in the clubhouse too is really down compared to last year oh like, yeah no that that like, loss last night killed us yeah <laughs> chris sale is super negative at this point um even mookie betts has had his moments where he's really really negative um and i know that when you lose games it, everything is is ugly and stuff like when the yankees are winning games everybody's saying oh look at the clubhouse chemistry everybody's getting along they're having so much fun yeah, it's fun to win games, but when you're losing games, it's not fun. So you're not going to see that kind of stuff happening. Um, but all right. So what do you think about Cora? What do you think his? How would you rate his job this year? Um, I think Cora's great. I think he's fine. Okay. I mean, on one hand, we aren't conversion rate. Whatever stat you. What does him? This is the this is the thing. Like, I like Cora as a manager because I just feel like he's like a he's a, a very good mixture of like the way baseball used to be and the way mm-hmm. that it is today. So mm-hmm. I like that, and I like that he's young enough to still be. He's like young enough to be cool with these players, but he's also I feel like they respect him enough to know that he means business, right? right. So that's why I like Alex Cora. Now, if we want to pretend that managers actually have like a uh, a hand in the success of, of how players perform. Well, I think that the success of the lineup far outweighs what the bullpen has been this year. You know, right. I feel like we're talking about the best lineup in baseball. We might have the worst conversion rate, but I still think as a team, we're striking out the most batters as a pitching staff. Yeah. See what I'm saying? So it's like, I I'm good with Alex core. I'm, I'm good with everything. Again, this is a very odd <laughs> situation for a team to be this good in one side of the sport and not and for the other side to not even be close and you well you see the result yep <sighs> let's go red sox let's uh let's move on from the red sox before you start crying on us i Baby. will never ever <laughs> cry <laughs> the only time i cried in baseball was like when i got pegged the first time when i tripped when i tripped over my untied cleats Ah. And really hit myself hard on the ground, and and like I think one day I made an error in little league that cost us the game. Those are like the only three times I cried. So, oh, good job, man. 
Let's move on to the Rookie of the Year um, award. I know that it's early to do award season speculations and stuff, but MLB.com put out a piece um, speculating, too. And so I started to do some research, and I counted 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 rookies this season that are having phenomenal years. And I can't remember a year where so many rookies have broken. I, I'm not. This, this doesn't even include Bo Bichette. Or some of those other players that are coming up now, um, Aquino, um, because they haven't played enough games. But who, at this point right now, who gets your American League Rookie of the Year award vote? Uh, we talked about this last week, and I forget what I said. I think I said they're going to give it to Vlad just because he has turned it up as of late. You think so? Yeah, but then, of course, we said that, and then in between last episode and today, Jordan Alvarez put on okay. a yo. Yeah, does he have enough? Does he have enough to be considered Rookie of the Year? Like, yeah, is he, would he would he actually be in the conversation to get the votes? I think so because when Gary Sanchez was in the running and he he was runner up like to twenty something games, right? Yeah, he didn't play that many games. Um, yeah. And so I think I think Jordan Al- Alvarez has like 40 or 50 games played at this point. By the end of the year, he'll have about half the season in. So I think that I think that he'll be in in conversation for it. And then there's also who I never considered. Um, Luis Arias, is that how you say it? From the Twins? He's, yeah. He, he's slashing he's, 350, 421 with a 446 slugging. Yeah. This guy is a monster, man. Yeah, no, he really is, man. He came out of nowhere. Out of uh, nowhere. O- Oscar Mercado from the Indians. I have him yeah. on my fantasy team, and he was ripping it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Pretty much till the All Star break, and he kind of he's kind of fallen off a little bit since, but he's not like a power hitter type of guy. Yeah. So, what where what 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 are power hitters? The what are non power hitters in baseball these days? They're nobody, man. They're filth. They're That's the lowest it. of the low. That's so it. that guy's not getting it. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to go with Alvarez, man. It, yeah, it has to be between Alvarez or Arias. So you don't think Vlad's gonna get the gonna get it? I think he's so freaking popular that he's gonna get votes just because he's popular. Like when he was when when they called him up, I don't know if you remember that giant fucking ordeal that they made about Vlad coming up. Like it was like the second coming of Christ in baseball. Yeah, only only to find out that Bo Bichette is like the prized prospect of that. Oh, you know what? I didn't add Biggio. What's his name? Craig Biggio's Craig- son. Calvin Biggio? Yeah, yeah, he's a beast too. I don't know how many games he's played though. Uh, he only got called up like a month ago, I guess. Yeah, he's a beast, but he wouldn't I wouldn't put him in this uh okay. Alvarez and Aries combo. What so, about uh So I agree. No, go ahead, go ahead. For me it's between Alvarez and Arias, but I think I would go Alvarez just because he's dominating he's dominating the sport right now. Like he's phenomenal. So I would go Jordan Alvarez in the National League. You have an even better Class. Yeah, this to me is tough. Yeah, you have Pete Alonso, Fernando Tatis Jr., who's freaking amazing. Brian Reynolds oh. is having a good year. Nobody's talking about Brian Reynolds, by the way. Oh, um, I would. He's on my, my team as well. So. <laughs> Mike Soroka has been really good with the Braves. Uh, Chris Paddock has, has shown moments, flashes of, of greatness this season. Um, right now, I think I would give it to Fernando Tatis. I think he's a complete player. Um, I like what he brings to the game, and he's living up to the hype, man. Yeah. Uh, shout out to Brian Reynolds because I, I I think he's leading second. He's either second, first in both average and on base percentage in the National League. Okay. Last I checked, this is like a week and a half ago or so. Um, he has a four but or five I would, on base. Yeah, I would give it to Tatis because he's the, he's like you said he's the complete player. But when Pete Alonso uh, breaks the National League home run record in the next following week or so, yeah. I think he's gonna get it because that's the way I see baseball trending. Um, but then both both Pete Alonso and Tatis strike out a lot. Yeah, they do. Let me just but throw that in there. Strikeouts don't matter in baseball anymore. For those of you that still care about strikeouts, they Nobody strike cares. out a lot. So. Nobody cares anymore, bro. Nobody cares about the strikeout no more. And of all <laughs> of all these pitchers, because we didn't really mention the pitchers, you have John Means for the Baltimore Orioles, uh, Zach Plezak, which, by the way, is he 
the guy from MLB Network's son. Yeah. Dan Dan Plezak. Yep. Um I don't know why I didn't know that. Mike Soroka. Uh, and there's one more pitcher in this list. Where did I put him? No. Chris that's Paddock. It. Chris well, Paddock. Well, you already mentioned you already oh. mentioned Chris Paddock, yeah. So like before. of these pitchers, who who do you like the most? Uh so I feel like Paddock kind of fell off as of late. He's yeah. he's still he's still nice, but he's not like this. In the beginning of the year, he was like lights out. I like uh, his so attitude. He reminds me of an old school pitcher. Like, yeah, like he, like he wants to bite your head off. You know. Yeah, I w I would go with Soroka though, but I'm surprised Soroka's even eligible. Like, he was up for a good amount last season. Last year, yeah, yeah. And between Plesac and and John Means, look at look at honest, look at Plesac's e ERA three two seven and FIP five oh four. That's what. Yeah. Rings a rings a bell for me um when you take defense out of the equation his era balloons way up mm -hmm. um so I guess and, john means would be, yeah john means would be the the guy yeah. john means and, owns aaron judge by the way oh. okay, I drop? you should have you should have traded him to me man he's pitching today i think as well nice, nice. i should have i should have traded him but you know that's a lesson learned. Okay. Even though he is having a good year, he may not be hitting home runs like He's crazy. He's having okay an okay year. Yeah. Ooh, Judge, look at his numbers, bro. Late lately, he has not been doing that great. Like, okay. I will give it. Like, look at the last two weeks. Judge over Mookie. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so all right. So so we're saying AL Rookie of the Year goes to Jordan Alvarez. NL Rookie of the Year. We're both agreeing on Fernando Tatis Jr. Yeah. Yeah, man. So this is an exciting class. I I love it when you get stuff like this. Like in like in the 96, 95, when you had A-Rod and Jeter and Nomar and those guys coming up at the same time, you felt like, okay, like there's another, there's a new crop of players that, that are, are ready. Wait, like we're, yeah. we're starting to see Pujols is fading away. Miggy Cabrera is kind of a non-entity anymore. That class is starting to disappear a little bit. And we're seeing an exciting group of players right now. So... I'm excited, man. I love baseball. We should get more people involved in the game. Oh, one more thing about baseball, and then we'll move on to film and TV. Um, the Field of Dreams game. Oh, what, yeah. What's your take on this? I love it. Like, do stuff like that, man. Like, get 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 the Sandlot crew to, I don't know, do something. But I, li I like it, man. There's so many baseball movies out there. Yeah. For them, like... Did the Angels in the outfield use a specific type of uniform for that movie? It was the California Angels uniforms. Yeah, there was oh, a it was like the navy was, blue hat with the A and the halo around it. That was like really their uniforms though. So I believe that's so, not like yeah. a thing they, that's not like something they could integrate into. But but I, overall I like it because I feel like it's it's fun. Like that's something that doesn't take away from the well, again, I, I read what the dimensions would be in that field, and they better change that shit. <laughs> well, no, they said that Did they're going to use the old Comiskey Park dimension. So they're not going to use the actual Field of Dreams dimensions because I think it was like 250 or something yeah. to the corners or some shit like that. Yeah, it was crazy. Although that would that would be fun to watch. But um, would it though? Would it? Mm. Would it be fun? Would Would it be fun to see a guy get jammed and hit a home run? I guess not. All right, like a like a Benintendi home run off of the pesky pole. <clears throat> just saying yeah those that's not that's not fun overall right. like one of All those right. in, the, in the blue is cool but it's not like fun but i feel like having the the a game there is it just one game or is it a series i'm not i'm, I'm guessing it's a series because i can't imagine you're gonna go to you're gonna travel to iowa to play a game and then to chicago or new york or whatever to play the rest of the series i would imagine I think, it's a series the only thing is, is that doesn't it only hold like 25,000 or 20, 2,500 people? Somebody posted a mock-up of the stadium, and uh, it looks like a, it almost looks like a college baseball field. Yeah. With the are, dimensions is, of, of the old Comiskey Park, and I guess they want they want you to be able to see the cornfields in the background. Um, I think it'll be cool, and I think that if, 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 not, if they don't have that many seats available, they're just going to jack the prices up. They're going to make their money somehow. Um, yeah. And people will pay for it. I mean, depending on the price, I would be down to go check it out. I think that'd be cool. I've never been to Iowa before. Fuck it. Why yeah, not? Yeah, man. I'd be down. Let's see. <laughs> Let's look into it. Yeah, right. Uh, maybe we could get press passes.
This Iowa trip is brought to you by audibletrial.com. Hey, this this Iowa road trip is independently produced by. All right. Let's move on to. Oh, no. Let's stay with sports real quick before we go on to television and film. So I was in DR when the, the whole Antonio Brown situation. We're moving on to football now, the NFL. Uh, yeah. the, the whole Antonio Brown situation went down. Yeah. How did it first off? I'm hearing frostbite and I'm hearing helmet. So I understand the helmet portion. He doesn't want to be told what helmet to wear. He wants to continue wearing the helmet that he's been wearing, I guess, for his entire career. He, I guess, is fighting against the league and he lost. So he, he officially has to wear the helmet that they, they're telling him to wear. Um, so I, I understand that portion. What's going on with the frostbite? Like, he got frostbite from cryo healing. Like, you know how uh, is that even the word cryo healing? You know when I, people sit in a bathtub of ice? Yeah, 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 yeah. No he way. Got, yeah, he got frostbite from that. Is what I'm. Is what I heard. And wow. as far as as far as the helmet thing goes, I mean, I kind of see his point because if he has used the helmet his whole career, yeah, and now he switches helmets. I feel like he and they're forcing him to switch the helmet, which I don't know the whole extent of it. I don't know if there's a a proven reason of of like health precautions why they have to switch the helmets. But it sounds like to me like the NFL just likes to be strict in everything that the players wear. Mm -hmm. Like these guys can't even wear like special cleats or or whatever. Right. Uh, yeah, the NFL is like is like crazy with with those rules. But I don't know if I don't know the full extent of why he's. He's being forced to wear these new helmets. I just know that they stopped making the ones that he wears. But if he does go out there and like snaps his neck or something, I feel like he should have the right. I mean, if he's still alive, obviously, he, <laughs> should, he should be able to like sue NFL. I don't know, man. Like, oh, that's just me. Or... So as all sports stories happen to do, this one sparked a conspiracy theory. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Remember this, Dan? <laughs> Gonna let it play out. <laughs> I mean, what a jingle, man! Jesus, what a jingle! <laughs> um, what conspiracy theory came out of this? Oh, you're talking about the Madden cover? Yeah, so last year Antonio Brown was on the Madden cover, and apparently, to create Madden, they use a system called Frostbite. So, if you look yeah. at if you look at the, the Madden cover, you see Antonio Brown with the Pittsburgh Steelers. I guess running or whatever, and in the very bottom, there's like a hand or something with frostbite on it, and people are saying that maybe he was cursed. <laughs> yeah, the, um, you never heard of the Madden cover curse? I've heard of the Madden cover curse. Like anybody that's been on the Madden cover ends up getting hurt or whatever. The uh, the first time I remember hearing about it was when Michael Vick was on the cover, but wasn't Tom Brady on the cover recently? And he won the the Super Bowl. Or am I making that up? He was in the 2018 cover. And they lost the Super Bowl ah, that year. Okay, okay, okay. They lost to the Eagles. Gotcha. Wait, all right. Hold on. We're in they, 2019. The Super Bowl is going to be in 2020. So that came out in 2018, and the ago. Super Bowl was in 2019. So they actually won the Super Bowl. Wait, I don't know. Wait, no, but that he he broke the curse. He broke the curse. Gotcha. Okay. All right. So. Actually, Mm, yeah, every everyone I'm looking at right now, besides having Barry Sanders, who retired like decades ago, mm -hmm. uh, pretty much either got hit with an injury the following year or retired. So you believe in the curse? Uh, yeah, I'm a Red Sox fan, man. We believe in curses. So <laughs> yeah, so I mean, it's kind of crazy about. that Antonio Brown was like the talk of the season. He goes to the Raiders, and now he's dealing with this whole thing. Is he, since I wasn't here and I don't know what the fuck is going on, is he expected to play this year or or not? Yeah, I think he's already reporting to camp. Okay. After all this thing died after all these things died down. Uh, so, so he's not he, losing any toes or anything to frostbite. I have no idea. But I don't think it's gonna he'll he might miss I'm not saying he's not gonna miss time, but I think he'll play this year. But I think pay attention to the irrelevancy of, of his world like he's he's i don't think he realizes like what he had in pittsburgh and the way things ended in pittsburgh i mean i get it like do you but uh i don't know gotcha i don't know man so it, live from the ground over in oakland we have ct thanks for reporting ct 
Oh, <laughs> thank you, man. And uh, glad to be here. Thanks for the. Uh... <laughs> so fucking awkward. All right. So that was your conspiracy theory for the day. Let's move on to television and film. When I was flying back from DR, so I decided I'm going to download a few movies just in case I get bored. I went on iTunes. You could download movies for like a dollar, dollar ninety nine. And uh, you don't have to be connected to Internet because the Internet is shoddy over there. So I downloaded three movies. I downloaded Cocaine Cowboys by Billy Corbin. Um, I downloaded what was the other one? Point Blank, which I didn't finish watching. And I would download and Enter the Dragon. So I watched Cocaine Cowboys on the way to DR, and I watched Enter the Dragon on the way back from DR. And okay. I remember watching Enter the Dragon as a kid, and I remember watching The Last Dragon, the one with the with the black dude. You know, who's the master? Have you ever seen that one? Have I ever seen? I love that movie. That movie's amazing. Hey, yeah. my man, what it look like? Anyway, it's a classic. It is. So you anyway, ever see the, you, ever, you ever see the scene where where the, where the little guys like he's break like uh, he's break dancing his way out <laughs> and he's of kicking the, people's out of the ropes. No, no, no. He's <laughs> Oh yeah, there's that. There's that yeah, yeah. little Asian kid. But I'm talking about uh Bruce Leroy's br- little brother. He gets tied up and he just starts like Oh yeah, yeah. He does the he robot just starts... to get off of the ropes. <laughs> so stupid. I love that movie, man. <laughs> I love that movie, man. Um which by the way, we should do like over the next few episodes, maybe we should go back and talk about like some of our favorite movies. Like that would be a good one to go back and break down. That movie's and, like a cult classic. That would need like its own. And like a John, like I used to love John Claude Van Damme movies when I was a kid. Like Bloodsport. Have you ever watched Bloodsport? Yeah, I've seen a lot of Van Damme movies. To oh be honest, oh my god, with. I think yeah. we should definitely do that. But anyway, back to Enter the Dragon. Um, so I rewatched it on the flight back from DR, and I was super excited because I remember as a kid the Bruce Lee movies were like, you know, he was dead before I was, you know, even born or whatever. But yep. um, it was. They were awesome. They were awesome. The martial arts movies were huge at one point. And so I watched this and it started off and I'm excited. The, the music is amazing. You had a little bit of this. Doesn't that get you pumped up? Yeah. Fucking great music. What? Oh, what was that? <laughs> Fucking awesome. Anyway, um, <laughs> but then you get into this whole like he's like training with his master and there's like random fight scenes and deep you know words are being spoken between him and his master and then he randomly starts training this kid for like two seconds um and then you jump into this whole spy thriller thing where they want him to break into this island to i don't even know why i still don't have an explanation why to free a whole bunch of women or so i have no idea what the fuck is going on and um the whole movie was this buildup, and I just kept waiting. Like, where are the fight scenes, man? Come on, give me a fight scene. Give me a fight scene. And it, I almost didn't get any. Like, I felt like if you totaled up the entire movie, which is about an hour and a half, I would say that maybe 10 to 15 minutes of it involved fight scenes. And I would say about only about seven of it, maybe half of it, were with Bruce Lee in it. And I was like, what the fuck, man? Like, it it kind of has, like, that iconic moment where he, like, stomps the guy's face in. Yeah. Yeah, you <laughs> you've seen you've seen that Rika. But I'm, I'm looking at this now. I, I didn't even realize that was the last movie that he made. That was the last movie that he made, yeah. So maybe that's maybe maybe that's where the hype maybe it wasn't a good movie, but it being the last movie that he made before he died, it yeah. probably, you know, has this like untouchable thing about it being that it's his last movie, but overall, I mean, I don't think it's wrong to think that movie probably did suck to be honest with you i don't i think i sat and watched one full bruce lee movie in my life Mm -hmm. and i can't even tell you which one it was it was the one with chuck norris in it oh that was uh it has dragon in it too what the fuck is the name of that? the way of the dragon something like that yeah but i mostly (laughs) do just watch my bruce lee clips like by the as i said like clips like on youtube and stuff and i I love those things man so yeah yeah but yeah, I don't know about Enter the Dragon. It, it when I the clips that I've seen from Enter the Dragon, it does look kind of random. Like there's really no direction. Like the villain or, in the movie doesn't have any hands, so he has prop hands, right? And when he fights <laughs> Bruce Lee, <laughs> he grabs a fucking bear claw. But it looks like it's the worst prop I've ever seen in my life. And then he grabs another prop that has like three blades on it, and that's why he has blades on his chest. I mean. Cuts yep. on his chest and on his face and stuff. Um, 
But it was almost like all this buildup for him to fight this villain. And the hardest part about fighting the villain wasn't exactly that the villain was a better fighter. Like, I guess Chuck Norris and Bruce Lee were equal fighters at that point. Um, yeah, that fight scene lasted like 10 minutes between yeah. him and Bruce with 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 Bruce Lee's fight scene with the villain in this movie, it lasted like ten minutes, but it was ten minutes of the guy trying to run away from Bruce Lee and like bringing him into a room full of mirrors so he can, can like trick him and shit like that. And in the end, <laughs> Bruce Home Lee, Alone style, Home Alone style, yeah. In the end, Bruce Lee, of course, reigns victorious, and the movie ends. And you're just like, okay, like why did I just sit through this shit? And That's... and they're developing three different characters. They're developing Bruce Lee's character, this character Roper, who's a gambler and williams who's a he's like a black martial artist and he loves women and he's cocky and all this stuff and so they take away from lee's story and i feel like that was a distraction for me there's also parts like really random parts like there's a part where they're on a boat traveling to the island and this guy randomly wants to pick a fight with bruce lee on the boat and bruce lee says to him something to the effect of he, may, he says one of his, like, mythological shits that you just don't even know what the fuck it means. You're like, what the hell? What? What does that yeah. mean? I don't, I don't even know what that means. And he convinces the guy to get on a little boat and that they're going to fight on a different island. I don't know why. Because aren't you on a boat to go to another island to complete a mission? Why are you going to get off that boat to get on another boat to go to another island to fight? But he ends up just tricking the guy to get on the boat and lets him, like, sail away. But, um, yeah, I was a is little that, disappointed, man. Is that the movie where he's wearing his famous, like, yellow jumpsuit? No. I think that's the Chuck Norris one. All right. Yeah, man. I, think. I don't know. Uh, that kind of reminds me of, like, the randomness of the fighting. Kind of reminds me of, like, Mortal Kombat. Do you remember Mortal Kombat? Of the course, first one? Yeah, yeah. Do you remember it? Like, I liked that movie. And as a kid, I liked it. I watched it as maybe, like, Five years ago, that's just a random uh, guess for how long it's been since I watched the movie. But I've watched it as an adult, and I don't hate the movie, but it was random. Like, random. there were certain parts where you're just like, why couldn't this happen before? Like, if they're really here to take this guy down, then what does this have to do with it? Why is why is the four-armed guy beating up, like, ten guys in a row? Like, aren't they all supposed to fight one at a time? Like, right. stuff like that. So Yeah, I don't know. It's random. Um, so yeah, I would say watch it because it is a classic film and there's a lot of inspiration drawn. You could see like Tarantino drew a lot of inspiration from this movie. Um, the music is awesome. You get pumped up for shit, but then you, you kind of get disappointed. It's worth watching though. Cause it's a Bruce Lee movie. Is, so definitely go check it out. And, um, yeah. Is that why you watched it? Because Quentin Tarantino has like referenced it a lot. So in once upon a time in Hollywood, Bruce Lee, not the real Bruce Lee, a guy uh, who plays Bruce Lee makes an appearance. And there's a controversy. I don't want to spoil anything. Um, yeah, don't. If, if you read anything about films, you probably know what I'm talking about. But Bruce Lee fights one of the main characters in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And but like a real, not on a movie set, a uh, real fight. It was like a real fight. They were on a movie set and Bruce Lee apparently was really cocky back in the day. So Tarantino wrote him to be a, char a cocky character. And uh, one of the characters in the film, either Brad Pitt or Leonardo DiCaprio, I can't tell you, um, kind of makes fun of him. And that causes a fight to happen. And it doesn't end as people would have expected it to end. Um, OK. So I was like, I, like, now I want to watch a fucking Bruce Lee movie because of this. And I did. And Did you okay. ever watch the one where I think his son plays him as yes. like his life? And he died, too. Yeah, his son died filming that movie, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, you yeah. know what? I just, I, I don't know if I just, I'm imagining something else maybe. Maybe that's not the case. But yeah, that's, he did play he, him in a movie, I think. He died, didn't he die playing in The Crow or something? That's where he died. There was a prop gun in The Crow. And he got shot. They put a real bullet in it. From a real gun, yeah. Right. Which, we're going to have to talk about that one day because that's like one of those stories that creep like it creeped me out so much when i heard it that and I, I never bothered to do research on it so yeah but speaking of quentin tarantino i watched yeah. the hateful eight in one sitting nice friday night what'd you think i liked it a lot i thought it was really good man but mm -hmm. and i don't know and i don't i don't have a problem with it 
because I like the authenticity in movies. But does Quentin Tarantino have an obsession with actors using the N-word in movies and stuff? <laughs> because this is like the fifth movie. I, not the fifth. I'm exaggerating. But it's definitely the third movie that I've seen where like that's like a big part of yeah, yeah, yeah. the movie. <laughs> I know. I know that he. So th- it's funny because he was on a podcast um, recently, like a four part podcast. I think it's called Quentin Tarantino Presents. And he talked about that. He talked about the use of the N-word because a lot of people don't like that he uses it. He uses it in... I know he uses it in Reservoir Dogs. He uses it in... in, uh, Pulp Fiction. Pulp Fiction, which that scene is kind of funny, although it's kind of offensive. Yeah, it is. Django Unchained. Definitely uses it in Django Unchained. I don't know if he uses it in Jackie Brown or any of those other movies or Kill Bill. I couldn't imagine why he would use use it in those movies. But he said that he... He took into consideration what everybody was saying and he felt bad about it, so... When he did the the Western trilogy, Inglorious Bastards, Django Unchained, and Hateful Eight, if that word were, were to be used, it was only going to be used by a bad guy. Doesn't make it any better, but he does use that word a lot. You're right. Yeah, I don't, but I don't have a problem that he does because no. I feel like it's a movie, right? And in know? Django and in Django Unchained, it's a movie about slavery, and that word was thrown around at that time for me. And in ha- yeah, go ahead. And in in Hateful Eight, it's 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 the same time of same like time you know. Right. Yeah, so it, like the slaves had just been freed at that point. Um, people took took a lot of offense to Django and Chain, the use of that word, the Mandingo fighting, this, this, and that. In some ways, what I really liked about Django and Chain is that it didn't mince words. It, it didn't hide from the fact he didn't. It wouldn't be realistic if it was a movie about slavery and that word weren't being tossed around, or if it was like Twelve Years a Slave. I really like Twelve Years a Slave, but it almost so felt I, it almost felt like a movie that that I don't I, I can't even explain it like I don't know like, why would why would he why would you leave that out of a movie though and why right. would you ever restrict yourself like for anything in a movie it's a movie and the time period was ugly you know what I mean yeah like we can't and I ha- and I don't know why I have a feeling that the people that had a problem with that movie are people that have a problem with anything these right. days. Right. And I think that's very sad and we can't run away from what this country used to be like. Like we just can't ignore it. Exactly. You can't make a movie about that time and not act like even if it wasn't about that, if it was that time that word was being used like, you know, right. well, the way that he 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 portrayed it. Right, right, right. And so I so, get it. It's 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 a white guy writing about those times and using those words, so it's uncomfortable, but it's a movie. Like, you know what I mean? A movie. Let it go. Let it go. Um, oh, yeah. So, Inglorious, ba- not Inglorious Bastards, The Hateful Eight. Um, aside from that, did you, what did you think? But I, I, didn't, I didn't have a problem with him using that word. So, it, I, I love the movie through and through. Like, it's, it was a, exactly what I thought I was going to get out of the movie. Yeah. You know, like, it was a Quentin Tarantino movie, especially towards the end, like you said. Um, How about that random Channing Tatum appearance? <laughs> that was that was random, <laughs> right? But I like it because that's he, he was he. I mean, okay. Uh, besides Samuel L. Jackson, he was like the second, third biggest actor in that movie, and he yeah. only had like a small part. Yeah. Uh, the only thing I I would say was kind of random was without giving anything away was the Mexican guy. Yeah. Right. Like his whole thing in that movie i feel like he didn't have enough like i really believe that he was just a random just you know threw somebody in there <laughs> yeah yeah but yeah. without getting everything away yeah guys if you have time if you have three hours to kill watch that i so i Not- watched that movie when it came out in 70 millimeter and the only time they had it available was like at midnight so i didn't get home until like three three thirty four in the morning yeah fucking loved it man and then and when i went they 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 did it like a like they would release a movie back in the day, like it was a ro- they call it a road show, and mm-hmm. in between they stopped it and they had an intermission with like original music and shit, so you can go and pee and stuff like that. Wow. I've never been to a movie like that. It was pretty cool, but it was late as hell, and there was a creepy ass guy that came into the movie theater, and I was pretty sure that I was gonna be a victim of a mass shooting, and I wasn't. Oh, oh. Thank God. Um. Anyway, so that's that's our TV and film section. Uh, there was something else that I wanted to say. About something I'm watching recently, Glow. Have you watched Glow on Netflix? No. Good. It's a good show, man. It's 30 minutes per episode. 
It's very female heavy. It's a female lead uh, led show, but it's good. It's about eighties wrestling with females, and uh, I think it's funny. I think it's really well made. You guys should check out Glow on Netflix for sure. All right, let's move on to current events. Ooh, that's some serious music. Um, I, th- I thought that was leading to something. <laughs> no, man, nothing. Uh, just wanted a corny sound effect there. So <laughs> uh, let's start with Jeffrey Epstein because this is kind of a strange situation. And The Daily had an episode on him today. I don't know if you listened to it. Um, nah, I find The Daily a little bit annoying. So I'm Michael Barbaro. This yeah, that is guy, The Daily. That guy's weird. So, so, tell me about the time you got touched on the <laughs> penis. Um, so, so, Jeffrey Epstein is a fin- financier with ties to celebrities, politicians, and royalty. He was arrested earlier this summer on multiple charges, including pedophilia and sex trafficking. And um, apparently, he has ties to the Clintons. He has ties to some royal families. He has ties to Trump. He has ties to a lot of people. And there's there's a trove of documents that were un, that were released in which some names were revealed. I think it was like the governor of Maine or something like that was involved. There was a video that was released of him partying with Trump and Trump slapping some girl's ass. Um, apparently, him and Clinton were tight at one point, Bill Clinton. And uh, so after he was arrested earlier this summer, he had attempted suicide. They found him in a cell with marks on his neck and he was semi conscious. They brought him back. They took him to therapy. The therapist pronounced that he was okay to return to his cell, but he would have security guards check on him like every 10 minutes, and he would have a, a cellmate who was going to report to to guards and stuff if, if any strange activity was happening. I think like a week later, two weeks later, this Saturday, he is found in his jail cell dead. And apparently this is like the day of or the day before, the day after a second trove of documents were unsealed where there was going to, where there is more, apparently more names involved. So this almost seems too, too much coincidence is going on here. Um, and Trump is floating the conspiracy that Bill, that he has information on Bill Clinton and that the Clintons had him murdered. I can't see that <laughs> happening. Um, the left is saying that Trump is the president. Maybe he had him murdered because he has stuff about him. Um, I find it odd that he was able to commit suicide at this time. I don't know. What do you think? Wasn't it? Wasn't it just that the camera stopped working as well? So what I'm hearing, what what the Daily reported was, um, the New York Times Daily podcast, um, that the prison that he was being held in is understaffed and. The guard that was supposed to be watching over him is a temp, and he didn't. I guess he didn't check on him. And his room, his cellmate was also not in the in the cell at the time. So it just seems like if this is a guy that you're, they, there's a, a huge case on. This this was supposed to be the biggest case of I don't know, you know, in how how many years. Why would you put a temp guard on this guy, and why would suddenly? the cell may not be in the in the in the cell with him. It just doesn't make sense. I don't want to flow conspiracy theories that that this person had a murder, that person had a murder, but this seems fishy to me. Like it seems like something something but it went seems, on here. It's funny it's funny how like when there isn't clues to something, like something was done, something was like some some people conspired for this or something like we people believe that there's another underlying story right yeah and now with all of these things in front of us that he had a roommate that wasn't in the room that the guard was a temp guard i think his lawyer asked the i don't know who controls it but they took him off suicide watch mm-hmm. that at that moment uh, and I think I, I don't know if this is just a complete lie, but I, I think I read somewhere that there was cameras pointed at to whoever came in and out of the room. Those stopped working. What? So with all the, yeah, <laughs> with all these things, it's like, I, I'm going to naturally lean towards the side of that. 
something happened, but people will try to prove it wrong. So now that we do have all these clues and we do have this situation, this unique situation of a big case where a lot of big people were going to go down and in the end, uh, it's just it's crazy, man. Like it's it's, it's almost hard to believe. Mm-hmm. But uh, I believe I believe that something was done that wasn't suicide. Yeah. And also, did you hear did you hear how the autopsy? The whoever performed the autopsy didn't have an answer for for his uh suicide. Yeah, that's fucking weird, man. I don't know, man. I, I think that whoever is behind this, we're never gonna find out. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, and, and the thing too is that in cases like this, when the person dies, the case the the case dies with him. Um, but the the New York Attorney General, um, New York State Attorney General says that he's gonna continue pursuing. To bring people, the people, the accusers, justice. Um, whether I don't know how I don't know how that's going to happen, but I, I don't know. Man. Gonna, I think they're going to go with the people who were involved in getting him these children or minors. You know, like the people yeah. involved in helping him achieve this. There, I think they're all documented somewhere. It's crazy. You know? It's just it's and the thing too is that this guy was dealing with multimillionaires and billionaires. So we're talking about people that have a lot of money and in this country with money comes a lot of power. So it could be anybody that had this guy removed. It could have been, you know, a Wall Street a Wall Street, you know, yuppie or some shit. Who knows? Um, could have been a lot. It could have been a group of people. Maybe they all a group of people. Conclusion like, "Hey, like let's get this done cuz like we're all looking bad here." But uh-huh. uh, you know, I don't know, man. It's crazy. But can you imagine that it comes out that it like because there, there's the QAnon conspiracies about the Clintons being murderers and shit. Like, I don't know if you remember last year, they spread a, a conspiracy about pizza shops. that That's where they they had like sex shops or some shit. And one guy actually went to a pizza shop in D.C. with a gun and started shooting. And when he got to the room where they claimed that that's where they were holding people, it was just like a regular pizza shop. <laughs> closet or something and he was arrested and um so there's a lot of conspiracy theories with reddit and stuff like i stopped we tried using reddit for a while to promote our podcast reddit is fucking nuts and yeah, uh fuck, fuck, reddit. Uh, fuck reddit, reddit. Uh, <laughs> yeah. a lot of these conspiracy theories get spread around on reddit and on things like 8chan and 4chan and stuff like that um again i don't want to accuse one person of committing this committing this act because we have no idea what the fuck happened Something definitely happened here, though, and um, I hope that somehow, some way, we could find out what happened because this is creepy. It's kind of creepy. I know that this guy is a criminal. He he committed really horrible acts, but to know that somebody could sneak up on you at any point, at any time, and and, and remove you if that's what happened creeps me out a little bit. I'm gonna start watching the X Files again. I might have to start watching it with you, man. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and the second topic is a little bit of a downer, as if that wasn't a downer enough. But while I was away, there was also two mass shootings. Um, there was a one in Walmart in El Paso, Texas, where there were 22 people killed. Nearly 50, pe- nearly 50 people were wounded or hit by bullets. Uh, the killer used an AR-15 rifle. He, he did not kill himself. He was arrested and admitted that he was trying to kill as many Mexicans as he possibly could. Uh, prior to the shooting, he posted a manifesto sympathizing with white white supremacy and espousing uh, negative views about immigrants entering our country. Um, so you had that shooting. You had the one in Dayton, Ohio, where 10 people were killed, including the killer. Uh, apparently, the killer was killed within 30 seconds of him start, uh, 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 within 30 seconds of the first shots being fired. In, so that means in those 30 seconds, he was able to kill 10 people and injure 27 more um, in the act. And... I'm just getting to a point now where I live in a state where it's you can carry guns. You go into a hospital and you see a sign that says no weapons allowed. And, you know, I'm kind of creeped out to go into stores now. Even when I go to the movie theaters and I'm always thinking, like, is something going to happen? What was the movie that I went to go watch last year? I went to go watch or two years ago, Black Panther here in Pennsylvania. And uh, when I pulled into the parking lot, there was a pickup truck with a giant confederate flag and you could it was clearly somebody was going there to start some shit because there was this movie about black empowerment with black panther and they didn't like the message that was being sent and i remember sitting in that theater and thinking 
fuck, man, what if this guy's going to come in here and start shooting this fucking place? You know, like like with Hateful Eight, I had the same feeling. And I'm just like, we shouldn't be living like this, man. There's no, there's so no reason. There's no reason why somebody should be able to fire and kill 10 people and injure 27 in 30 seconds. Why do people own these guns? I have no idea. So what's the biggest uh, pushback on more gun control? Is it like the process of getting guns or is it that they want to completely remove ARs? So from what, when, and by the way, when, when they did propose something after the shooting in Connecticut where children were murdered in a, in a kindergarten classroom and it was killed by filibuster, they weren't trying to remove guns from anybody. They wanted to end... Uh, they wanted to end the sale of guns in gun shows. They wanted to limit the amount of bullets that your gun can sh- can fire. And I think they wanted to remove uh, and bump stocks, which turns an, uh, an, an, an a semi-automatic into a machine gun, essentially. And that was shut down. And um, so that they weren't taking your guns away. They were just making it harder for you to get a gun. And then if you have a gun, making it harder for you to commit a mass, an act of mass violence like this. And that that's my that's been my point. Like, yes, I don't like guns. I don't own guns. I don't plan on ever owning guns. Um, But if I if I did own a gun, why do I need? Why do I why do I need a machine gun? That that can fire fucking 40 bullets in like 10 seconds. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, my my argument for all this gun stuff is this, that if they had any laws around anything with guns right what's to stop is that gonna completely remove these guns off the street is it going to stop somebody from illegally obtaining these guns because if it's not gonna if it's not gonna do that then i feel like americans should have the right to possess the same type of weapons that people can get illegally Mm -hmm. that's i'm not saying i'm not saying that i'm not saying that i don't want that I don't want more gun laws or stricter. I don't even own. I don't think I'll ever own a gun in my life. You know, mm-hmm. I don't know that. Maybe I. Maybe someday I will. But I'm not a type. I'm not the type of person to want that's dying to own a gun. But I can understand why people who want to own guns have their. They feel like they have the right to own them and not and not put limits on that either. Right. You know. So the thing is that a lot of these mass shootings and these last two in particular. These guns were obtained legally. So these are legally obtained weapons. I get that. And you could okay. literally tomorrow decide, I want to buy a gun. And you can go to a yard sale, especially around here where I live. And if I see a gun that I like, I can buy it from that person. It's completely legal. There's no background check. There's no registration. There's none of that stuff. There's no training. I could just go and say, I want this gun. Here's $100. I got the gun. That's it. It could be... An AR, it could be a revolver, it could be anything, a, a, a rifle, a, a shotgun, whatever, and I could purchase that. So anybody in this country can go any can go to any um, gun show or, or yard sale or whatever and buy a gun legally without a background check. So first thing, background check. Second thing, if you drive a, a car, you're supposed to go get your registration every year, uh, get it inspected, get... Uh, insurance, all that stuff. When you have a gun, you don't have to do any of that stuff. In some states, in New York, you do have to register your gun. But um, create a registry so we know who has these weapons and and who, you know, and, and make it harder for people to obtain guns. Like, I don't think that some random person should just go into a store and be able to buy a gun. You should be able to go through rigorous testing, training, and then you obtain your gun. Because this is a, you know, what if one day you lose your shit? You, now you have a fucking a firearm that you can go out and shoot whoever, shoot whoever you want with it. And the thing is, yeah. the second the second leading cause of children ch- children death in this country is guns. Because people leave their guns unlocked in their closets or whatever. And these kids are getting them by mistake and killing themselves. And these, yeah. are, all legally, these are all legally purchased guns? All legally purchased guns. So the, the leading cause the of second leading. death. The second leading cause of children death is guns. legal guns. Yeah, legal guns. Legal. This doesn't take. This doesn't take into account illegal guns. Not to my knowledge, no. Well, I would. I would like to see that statistic just to confirm that this is legal yeah. gun. And again, I didn't say that those guns purchased by the two guys with the mass shootings were purchased illegally or legally. I'm just saying that 
as long as people can purchase guns illegally, which we know is happening because there's guns everywhere, um, as long as that's a thing, I don't see how we people exercise their right to bear arms. Putting like a year, year to three years process on that is going to benefit them when um, the majority of the people do own guns in case something like a mass shooting happens. Well, yeah, you you start the process now and then people who are found with weapons that they, sh- you know, by, by some means or whatever, you're not breaking into people's houses illegally to check if they have guns. But if you were found to have a weapon and you're not registered, that weapon gets taken away from you and that's it. And I know that there's still going to be illegal guns out there. I mean, we can't control that. Like, just like there's illegal drugs and shit like that. But um, most of these mass shootings, again, are being are being conducted by people who obtain these weapons legally. I'm thinking of Sandy Hook. It was a legally obtained weapon. Walmart legally obtained. Um, Aurora, the movie theater shooting, illegal, uh, legally obtained. Columbine, most of these are, are obtained by legal means. And it's too easy to get a gun these days. And I just, I think that I understand it is an amendment, but so was prohibition. Prohibition, people, they abolished alcohol and then three years later they create another amendment to reinstitute it into our country like that's what amendments are for laws are meant to be changed you can't you know when when the second amendment was instilled it was the 1700s 1800s people were walking around with muskets where it took you fucking five minutes to fill it fill it up with a with a bullet now i could put a bump stock on my ar and fire off you know hundreds of bullets inside of a minute to the point where you have 22 people killed and 50 people hit by bullets in a walmart 10 deaths, uh, 27 injured in 30 seconds in Dayton, Ohio. That's insane. It should, that's a weapon of war. That's not a, this is my right to defend myself from a criminal or whatever the fuck. This is, I'm going to war. Yeah, I don't believe, I don't believe that just because it's part of our constitution that that should give people a right to just bear arms and all willy nilly and not have a background check or anything like that. But all I'm saying is that I do see the reason why people push back on it yeah, so yeah, much. Yeah. And well, that that's it. That's I just see the reasoning why is what I'm saying. And yeah. uh, obviously, nobody wants these mass shootings. And if if we really believe that stricter gun laws is going to stop that, which I don't think they are, um, or if we think that kids, which I that's the first time I heard of that statistic, so I'm going to look it up later. But the children that are dying because people leave their gun unlocked in the drawer or something like that. I don't think stricter gun laws is going to change that. You know, the only way to the only way to change. I don't. How is that going to change if people can still get the gun at the end of the day? Because because they're obtained legally. And and we have we have countries like Australia and now New Zealand who are doing buyback programs where they're banning guns entirely. And Australia hasn't had a mass shooting since since that happened back in the 80s. And you have countries like England where police officers don't even walk around with guns. They walk around with batons. We don't see mass shootings. You might have seen one or two in the last decade, I would say, in in the UK. Um, This is a uniquely American problem. And the worst part about it is, is that the last few examples of this that we've seen involve some sort of white supremacy, hate crime aspect to it. So I think our politicians need to stop with the racist rhetoric and and just cut the bullshit already. And... um, we have to stop giving people like fucking Alex Jones and Tucker Carlson and, and these people a fucking platform. Like, we don't want to hear this shit anymore. This divisive ne- uh, rhetoric, and it's not just on the, on the right, it's on the left too, is hurting us. Like we had talked about prior to, to getting on to the, to the show. You can't, even if you, if all sides agree on something 100%, if one side identifies him or herself as a part of one party, the other party is going to oppose that person just because of that and that's you know that's a problem and most most people in america republicans and democrats agree that there should be stricter gun laws but our politicians aren't doing shit about it doesn't make sense yeah no (laughs) did you ever no you know what's crazy did you ever notice the timing of these mass shootings yeah what about it you're gonna give me another conspiracy theory i'm not i mean listen should i play the music play the music no no no, don't play it because it's long enough but the music (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> no listen all i'm saying is that this epstein thing just happened and people are thinking about it being a conspiracy or whatever mm-hmm. like 
I just I just always think back to the last mass shooting and it, it always relates to a certain time of like the country. Like the the political debates started mm-hmm. a week or two ago and bam, we get not just one mass shooting, back to two. back back to back mass shootings. And it's just the fact that these guys are so openly uh, white nationalists, white supremacists, whatever. It just seems like it's it's just like lobbing lobbing it up, like it's like a <laughs> it, it. Do you know? Do you kind of get what I'm saying? I get what you're saying. And I'm not yeah. I'm not saying and I'm not saying that. But people people come up with conspiracy theories all the time. But one as simple as let's cause a mass shooting right around the time of election. I don't. I I think I think you're gonna see another another mass shooting from here till. No, I mean election. I believe. I read this correctly that there's been there have been as many mass shootings as there's been days in 2019. The problem is that a lot of it don't get doesn't get reported. It gets swept under the rug. A mass shooting I think is defined as three people killed in a shooting. Um, so there's tons of mass shootings in this country. We just don't it, we don't talk about it unless it hits the level of last week where you have 10 people dead or 22 people dead. Um, one person that unnecessarily at the at the hand of a gun for me is too much. I, I I just like I said I think that at the time that our founding fathers wrote that amendment uh, that the American people have the right to bear arms. I agree, you do have the right to bear arms, but we need to start defining what these arms are because the weapons that some people are walking around with they're not just guns. These are for me these are weapons of mass destruction. You're killing 22 people. That's that's a that's a bomb. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's not that's not all. Let me fire off eight shots. Blah, 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 blah. Then I have to reload my gun with eight bullets. Like if I have a chance to run while this guy reloads his fucking bullets, at least I have a chance to survive. But this guy could just literally snap a clip in and keep shooting. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. A lot of people when I get into this topic, there was a guy that used to get into arguments with me on, on Facebook. And he would try to get into debates about whether I know whether or not I know what types of guns or what or whatever. And that's not the point. I could give two shits what a revolver is, a pistol, a rifle, a shotgun. I don't care. I just don't think that people should be able to obtain firearms that are used in war. It doesn't make sense to me. It it, it just doesn't. If a, if a cro- if a crook is going to enter my house and I want to defend my family with a gun, I don't believe that I'm going to need 175 bullets. To, to end this. I feel like yeah. I should be able to end it with two. One I warning. Mean, that, one a warning. A, and the second, the, the real deal. The, but, this, but see, that's the thing about that. Like, we, kidding, we've never... <laughs> yeah, I know. We've never... That's the thing about that. Like, we've never been involved in an altercation like that. I haven't. No. Uh, I'm just assuming you haven't either. Uh, the one or tw- two times I shot a gun was in DR at a mm-hmm. tree. You know, um, and I don't I, I totally agree. I don't think people should be able to obtain these weapons, but I also don't see how we can like if if people out there believe that they need to bear arms, I don't see why they would be open to just settling for like a handgun or something like that when they know that there's people out there with more than just a handgun. Mm hmm. That makes sense. Makes sense. And because I'm not a gun expert, <laughs> I'm just gonna say that I I kind of understand why they feel the need yeah. they would need that, you know. But overall, I do agree with everything you said that we 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 should definitely make that harder to obtain. That's insane, man. Yeah, it's crazy. Yep. Well, there goes another show, CT. <sighs> Kind of dark there at the end. Yeah, sorry guys. Um, all right, <laughs> <laughs> let's end, let let's end on a good note. All right, you got anything? Oh, I thought you had something for me. <laughs> um, it's eight o'clock. Right let me see. Hold on. Let me check the Yankee score. Eight this could... o'clock on the dot. In my hot spot, cruising the streets. The Yankees are three already... nothing. Let's go Yankees. Are you sure they're winning three nothing, or is it Baltimore winning three nothing? No, they're winning. They're winning three nothing. Three nothing. All right. Yeah. Let me see. Lemayhew. Why did I trade Lemayhew, man? For who? I traded him for Trevor Bauer. Good trade. I thought that maybe he would start to drop off a little bit, but he really hasn't. Judge sucks, man. No, he doesn't. 
He's just like not what he was. No, he's still good. All he does is get on base. That's it. That's good. Hit home runs. I bet you he has a. Uh, you're gonna hate me for saying this. I bet you he has a an above average weighted runs created plus. Uh, I wouldn't take that bet because I he probably does. His average is 100. I bet he's above that. His average is 100, or the league's average. The is league's 100? average. Hmm. WRC plus. Want to take a bet? Yay or nay? Nope. I'll take a bet that he's hitting home runs at a way lower clip than he was his whole career. Definitely. And every single one of his home runs are to center and oppo. None of them are to his pull side this year. Yeah. That was uh, honestly the biggest regret of a draft pick that I made. His He has a 128 WRC plus. He has a 397 on base, 463 slugging. I'll take it, man. I'm good with that. Something's not right. His isolated power is way down. Um you're you're okay with it because he's still doing work to get runs on the board. Mm-hmm. But as a fantasy baseball owner, yes, I was expecting at least twenty home runs this season with the injury. Well, I mean, he's he could still get twenty home runs, and he was out. He hasn't he hasn't hit one home run <laughs> against Baltimore or in Baltimore since like the last first series that they had there before he got injured. Yeah, how's that possible? Maybe Explain the obli- that. maybe the oblique is still hurting him. I don't know. I doubt it because what's his exit velocity? I don't know. I'm not on that. I'm on uh, fan graphs. Um, his walk rate is up from last year. He's walking more. He's striking out slightly less uh, from his career average. Um, I don't know, man. I still like Judge. I still think he's an impact player. He's not He's not the kind of player that strikes fear in you. I agree with you. Like When he's up to the plate, you feel like you can defeat him. But I think that perception isn't always reality. I think that Below the surface, he's more impactful than what it looks like. Like his Woba is three sixty six. That's pretty damn good. His he's he has a WRC plus of one twenty eight, which is pretty damn good. Um, and he's getting on base at a four hundred percent clip. So he's giving you he's giving and and the guy always has a three two count. It's fucking. Nuts. I've never seen a, a a hitter get into three two counts more than Aaron Judge. Um, so I still like him. I understand though, as a fantasy player, right now he's not he's not doing it for you. Do you want to know who's doing it for me in fantasy CT? Uh, I don't. I forget who you have on your team. So, Eduardo Escobar, man. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, man, let's 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 wrap this up. Uh, Thinking about fantasy, I'm just looking at right now. Uh, it looks like Dylan C's only gave up two earned runs, but he's still gonna get the loss, even though it would have been a tie game. And he only got me one point today, so nice. Wow. I need to win this week to secure that playoff spot. By the way, I'm so proud of my team. I'm so proud of my boys, man. A one and six start. Damn, man. So proud of these guys. Hey, man. I'm proud that you're proud. And I can't wait to hoist that championship belt over my head in front of a crowd of zero and... Just imagining the chance that could have been had, had this been a widely speculated sport. Um, can't wait to hold that money in my hands. I'll sniff it. I'd even wipe my ass with one of them. Who knows? You're already, you're already holding the money though, right? It's in Venmo. So it's digital money. Mm. So when I rip Crypto, out a piece... Cryptocurrency? Yep. Crypto. Word. <sighs> okay, let's sign off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. As we said to start the show, the Welcome to the Show podcast is independently produced by me and CT. Help people find our show by taking two minutes to leave a five star rating and review wherever you listen to podcasts. Also, the Welcome to the Show is brought to you by Audible. Go to audibletrial.com forward slash welcome to the show to get a free audiobook download and a 30 day free trial. That's audibletrial.com forward slash welcome to the show. Also, forgot to mention. Um, Screwball was released on Netflix this past weekend. I'm oh, noticing yeah. that our website is getting some traffic in terms of the Porter Fisher interview that we did, and Billy Corbin, the director of the of the movie, we interviewed him as well. So I'm going to re-release those episodes later this week. So look out for that as well. Um, CT, take care. 
。Take care now, bye bye then. I'm Michael Barbaro. This <laughs> is the Daily. <laughs>